Who's your favorite YouTuber? Well, this is ridiculously tough. <laughs> everyone and welcome to my channel I'm Maury Crossing and today we're doing a Q&A video to celebrate 100 wait 200 subscribers I didn't manage to release this video before we hit the incredible milestone of 200 subs thank you so much and firstly what how did we get here after just over two months of videos this is Crazy. I'm incredibly grateful for all of your support with videos and streams. It's been a wonderful experience in the Animal Crossing community and you guys make making videos such a pleasure. So thank you so, so much. So let's start this Q&A. But before we start, just to let you know, in the background, I will be running around trying to catch all of the fish that I haven't got so far in January. And there'll be a tick list here of when I get them. I was very lucky my first fish was one of the rarest fish on my list so yay but my luck does not continue throughout the whole video as you'll see but anyway to the questions firstly from the lovely caitlin thank you for your questions by the way what is your favorite villager well my answer to this question definitely changes often but right now doby and maple are probably my top two Doby because he's such a cute old wolfy man. Uh, Maple because I could just squeeze her little cheeks. Oh my goodness, she just brings a smile to my face. They both do. They're just so fuzzy and wonderful. It's really funny how your taste changes as you play the game though. Because before I wanted and loved all the tacos, the octopi, and I actually got them all onto my island at one point. But now I don't even have one left. No, yeah. And it's not like I dislike them or anything, but but I don't know if they will ever be returning to Sea Haven. But you never know. I still like them. It's just my tastes have changed, I guess. Also, feel free to answer these questions yourselves down in the comments. I'd be really interested to know your answers. Honestly, I'd love to know your answers to all these questions. Next, who's your favorite YouTuber? Well, this is ridiculously tough <laughs> because I've been watching YouTube for, is it? over 15 years now is that how long oh my god and i've watched and enjoyed so many people so it's really tough to choose well i'm never gonna be able to choose one so i'm gonna just have to categorize them into different categories <laughs> um so people i've probably watched the longest um and i still watch now would be wheezy waiter although his channel has gone through crazy amounts of like change in a good way it's been fun to see him evolve um, Rhett and Link, um, I still watch, I've watched them for a long time. And Jenna Marbles, although I didn't really watch her when I first started watching YouTube, but I loved it when she just did so many great things about her dogs. I loved seeing updates about her dogs, they were amazing. But she's not around anymore, so I, does she, of course she counts, but um, I feel like I'm forgetting people I watch every day. But there are so many talented content creators on this site, it's just ridiculous. On the creative side, I would say Amanda HD is someone I'm watching a lot at the moment and have done for the past few years. Um, I love bullet journaling and she's been such an inspiration from when I started. Like I found her when I started doing bullet journaling myself. Uh, next on the creative side would be cooking is Jun's Kitchen and Binging with Babish. They're both wonderful, very different, equally wonderful. Um, Jun and Rachel actually live fairly close to where I live, like in a city close to where I live. Um, they're really fun to watch, I definitely recommend. Gaming wise, I actually really like the Yogs cast. Although they're really old school YouTubers, I only discovered them last year, two years ago. Well, not discovered, I'd heard of them, but I really enjoy their silliness especially um, when they play Gmod and um, Among Us. <laughs> it's just it's just entertaining. They're just really lighthearted and entertaining, in my opinion. I used to watch a lot of um, Achievement Hunter, but not so much these days. Not There wasn't anything that particularly put me off. I just haven't watched them in a while. Anyway, Animal Crossing wise, and leading into the next question about who inspired me to make a YouTube channel, um, an Animal Crossing's YouTube channel, I should say. 
was probably Billie Jean because she's such a bundle of joy to listen to and actually I'm a mod in her channel and she's just wonderful. Also another Animal Crossing content maker that I really enjoy watching and inspired me was Froggy Crossing because she's just great and chaotic and hilarious and watching her builds is just a lot of fun. She makes it so much fun. So on to the actual question of what inspired me. Um, I was inspired by other YouTubers, of course. I, I didn't want to make my channel like theirs or anything. I just wanted, it just inspired me to want to share what I was creating. Um, also because I am an art graduate and I felt that my video editing skills needed a test. I haven't edited a video in a long while, except for a couple for work, but it's not quite, they don't quite count, I don't know. <laughs> I mean they do, but anyway, I just wanted to test myself. I really like pushing myself creatively and this was a new test. I'd never made YouTube videos before and I just love, love, love creating art and content, whether it's making videos, building an Animal Crossing, painting, making pottery, cooking, the list goes on. But I felt that I wanted to share my little something into the world and I love the Animal Crossing community. so. Here I am, with my little channel and all you wonderful people. I guess that's what inspired me being creative. Okay, on to the next person now. Kimia, my sugar mama. <laughs> Thanks for all your help on stream. What are some of my hobbies? Well, I really like picking up new skills whenever I can. I just love learning new things. Have done since I was a child. At the moment, I would say drawing, cooking, bullet journaling. Learning Japanese and gaming would be the main ones that I do at the moment. Yeah, I think so. Um, I used to swim and scuba, but 2020 said no to that. <laughs> also was taking a couple of pottery classes, which I would love to start up again. I really want to make my own ceramics. I wish that I could be doing it right now, to be honest. <laughs> but circumstances you know next countries i want to visit i have been very lucky that i have been able to travel a lot in my 20s i have worked saved traveled a lot but i guess the next place i would love to visit would be taiwan it's so close to japan and a couple of my friends or their families are from there originally and the food looks so good i was supposed to go in march of this year but situations <laughs> and <laughs> my motivation for traveling places is generally food related to be honest um it's one of it's probably the number one thing <laughs> on what i look up when i'm going to travel to a new place also another place i would love to go back to would be new zealand as i was only 15 when i went last time and my family lives there too so i'd love to see them <laughs> next favorite snacks Probably something potato or cheese related, or at least that's what I'm craving right now. <laughs> like sweet chili crisps or chips to my American and maybe Canadian viewers. <laughs> Dipped in hummus or salsa or some kind of, any kind of dip. Or just like a chunk of really nice cheese. They're probably my faves right now and have been for a long time. Next is favorite Japanese tradition. Hmm. Not 100% sure on what qualifies as a tradition, but I love New Year's here. It's a lovely family festival and I have a wonderful friend who has invited me to her family's New Year's every year. So much yummy food and just relaxing and playing, you know, family games together and drinking as well <laughs> is definitely a big part of New Year's. I'd say it's the Japanese version of Christmas. So yeah, and also going and wishing for good luck at the local shrine is part of it. It's really lovely and getting a fortune. I remember my first year here, I got the work, like really bad fortune and I had to tie it up because that's what you do with the bad fortunes. You tie them in a special place in the shrine. So yes, and luckily that, that year wasn't a bad luck year. Maybe I should have got that for 2020, but I didn't. So <laughs> yeah, I think that's my favorite Japanese tradition. I feel like I'm forgetting something. I do love setsubun too, which is like where kids throw beans at their parents dressed as oni, like demons. I've never taken part in that though. 
Oh, also mo- mochi making is really fun. Really tiring, but really fun. You like hit the really cooked rice in this kind of, what's it called? What The kind of grinder bowl. Pestle and water kind of thing. A huge pestle and water with a huge mallet. You just hammer on that thing until it's mochi. <laughs> and it's really fun, but really tiring. <laughs> Definitely would recommend. Thanks for your questions, Kimia. Next is the lovely bread. What is your favourite Ghibli movie and why? Well, another tough one, but I always seem to say Nausicaa. Sorry, I say Nausicaa, but I know in Japanese it's Nausicaa. 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 Anyway, I always seem to say Nausicaa when I get asked this question because I love how strong Princess Nausicaa is and the general message of the movie to stay and work with nature rather than fighting with it is super important but I also love Spirited Away very much and remember watching it when it came out and researching all the little Japanese things in it that I didn't know about at the time and the aesthetics are just beautiful I mean I the list could just keep going I'll be honest Howl's Moving Castle (laughs) Totoro oh Totoro is so cute (laughs) anyway next what is your favorite childhood show? Um, oh god, I'm hitting a blank. I know I really loved Spot the Dog and Postman Pat when I was really little. When I was really little. I feel like these are super old British shows that no one's gonna know. I know that Postman Pat's still going in the UK, <laughs> but anyway, as I got older, I remember watching a lot of Cartoon Network and Nickelodeon cartoons like Dexter's Laboratory, Fairly Odd Parents, oh the Wild Thornberries, basically anything with animals in it I loved. I really wanted to speak with animals when I was younger. I still do. It would be very interesting. Oh, and I loved Sabrina the Teenage Witch. I totally forgot about that show. Oh my god. Yeah, anything magical and witchy as well was a, a good one in Child Maury's books. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure there's so many I've forgotten, but those are some that I remember right now. <laughs> what What did you guys watch? Um, how often do you change up your island theme? Well, I have no specific time period, but I've played since June, and from then until November, I kind of just did my own thing. No theme. Like a temple here, a rainbow flower road there. Then I decided on a Ghibli nature theme. As you all know from my videos, I was really excited about it. I planned lots of builds and then the snow happened. So they all went out the window because they were all very green and foresty. So they, in my opinion, just wouldn't have worked for the snow. So that's when I changed my theme to the Harry Potter theme which is my current theme and it was genuinely the best decision for me because I'm so inspired in each build I do at the moment and I'm just yeah so excited to hopefully get a dream address out by February that's the plan at the moment and then change it back to Ghibli in spring with the cherry blossoms at least that's the plan and we'll see how long I take to get that dream address out I think basically I'll stick with the theme until I feel kind of uninspired by the idea of it. Yeah, so I'll keep going with it as long as I can. Hopefully bringing out DAs of each theme if I can. Next is what's your favorite music artist? Oh no, whenever I get asked like music, what's your favorite musical artist or what's your favorite movie? My mind instantly goes blank and I can't remember anyone I've ever listened to or anything I've ever watched. And the thing is, right now, um, I don't really get the time to listen to any new music anyway, or even any music at all. But um, I mainly listen to audiobooks when I get the chance. Uh, Oh, reading is another hobby (laughs) I forgot about. Not that I don't enjoy music, of course. Um, I love singing karaoke here. It's one of my favorite things to do. Again, another thing I can't do right now. It's just so fun. If you ever come to Japan, please, please, please sing karaoke, whether it's um, box, which is my favorite, or in a bar. It's just hilarious and fun. And you don't need to be good. You just need to be passionate. <laughs> anyway, I would say my favorite, my recent 
most favorite band would probably be official Higedan. They are a Japanese band that are super popular here in Japan. They do some really funky songs. I definitely recommend them. Also, I really love the song Lemon by Kenshi Yonezu. Um, sorry about the weird pronunciation there. <laughs> Another Japanese artist. Yeah, I'm just surrounded by Japanese uh, music here. <laughs> I also was listening to some George Ezra the other day, so yeah, I enjoy his stuff. Please give me any recommendations in the comments below because I would love to listen to some new stuff. And thanks so much for those questions, Bread. And now I'm hungry. <laughs> I want some bread. Sorry. Um, it's funny because before I started recording this, I was worried there wouldn't be enough of a video in these questions, as in I wouldn't be able to talk for long enough, but oh my goodness. Next is from the wonderful Amber. Where is my happy place? Well, I think that's quite easy right now as it's winter in Japan and it's quite cold. I'm not in the north, so it's not very cold, but it's still chilly. I would say it's under the kotatsu, which is a Japanese heated table with a blanket. So you kind of just snuggle underneath it um, with a cup of luxury hot chocolate with marshmallows and cream, obviously. Watching something funny or nostalgic with my boyfriend. That's probably my happy pit. That's probably my happy place right now. How many hours do I have on AC? Well, I think we looked this up on stream and it was 750 hours, which is kind of ridiculous considering how little of my island is finished and I started in June, not in March. Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, I think the only games with more playtime that I've done would be Overwatch and The Binding of Isaac. Man, that's insane. That's totally crazy. <laughs> anyway, next one. Favourite villager currently living on my island? I think we covered that earlier. Yes, Dobby, Dobby and Maple for sure. But I love all of them, to be honest. I have a lot of beautiful villages right now and I'm really sad that I'm gonna have to say goodbye to Lucky and Diana soon because they're not they're not Harry Potter they're not Harry Potter themed to me <laughs> anyway what would your superpower be if you had one so are we talking about which one I want the most or which one would suit me as a person like as in I was just given one in a comic or a movie because of the kind of I guess the way I act in some way well, I'll try to answer both, but I'm really bad with superpowers questions. When people are like, oh, what's what's the ultimate superpower? I'm like, I don't know. They all seem to have drawbacks, but lots of them seem convenient. Maybe I'm too tame for this. Okay. Right now, I would probably want the power of transportation. Just being so far away from so many people in so many different countries that I'd love to visit and say hello and give hugs to. It's really difficult sometimes. And I really don't enjoy getting on planes anymore. Not that I'm scared, but I've had too many long haul flights and the, there's no magic anymore. It's just feeling kind of bleh for like a ridiculous amount of hours. Even though I only did one long haul flight a year, but yeah. Okay, what would suit my personality? I mean, I said earlier that I wanted to be able to talk to animals and I do absolutely love animals, but is that what? I would get? I'm not sure. I'm going to come back to that. Thanks so much for those questions, Amber. They were really great to answer. And the final one is from Gio. Oh, thanks so much for the congrats, Gio. I really appreciate it. What made you travel or move to Japan? Okay, well, that's a super long story. So let me shorten it to probably a long story still. I really don't remember what first made me interested in Japan as a, I don't know, child, teenager. Um, I liked Pokemon, <laughs> but that wasn't why I wanted to come to Japan anyway. But I know my friend went and brought back some really nice pictures and we went through all the pictures together and they were like physical photos because it was that long ago. <laughs> and yeah, maybe it was from that that inspired me. I don't, I'm not sure. But anyway, I came to Japan when I was 18 with my best friend and my boyfriend at the time. I planned the whole trip. I love planning traveling things. It's so fun. So if anyone comes to Japan, I can give you like a spreadsheet of things you should go see. Anyway, also um, planning these things was a distraction from the part-time job I did to save up the money to get there. 
Um, we came here for two to three months and I traveled all over Japan and met so many wonderful people who I still talk to and meet up with to this day. Um, we also ate so much delicious food and saw so many beautiful things. After that, I went to uni, finished uni. And after that, I traveled to Japan and traveled around Southeast Asia too. Again, ate so much amazing food, saw so many beautiful things, made more friends. And I just thought I'd like to live in Japan sometime. I have lovely friends here, great food, and Japanese is a super interesting language. Not saying I'm good at it at all in any way, but it's super interesting to me. So after a while, I decided to come and teach here. There's lots of bits in between, of course, but basically people, food, and teaching is why I'm here today. And I love it. I really do love it. Thanks so much for the question, Gio. And thank you everyone who asked the question. That's all of the questions for today. As you can see, I caught a bunch of fish and bugs I wanted to get, which is great too. That elusive ore fish though. Thank you so, so much for the 100, then 200 subscribers. I really can't believe it. I'm so happy that people want to watch what I love to make and I'm so excited with the direction this channel is going. I think we have a wonderful community already and I hope that we get to 300, 500, heck, Maybe even 1,000. <laughs> Imagine that. That's, that's crazy talk there. That's crazy talk. But seriously, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. And if you haven't subbed already, what are you waiting for? Come join this awesome community and let's be creative together. I'll see you in the next video.